Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Meissner Media tutorial we're going to be learning how to create a lower third in After Effects and make it so it's editable in the new version of Premiere Pro 2014. Uh, this will be a little bit slower tutorial than normal since it's a little bit more in depth, less of a quick thing. But let's just hop right in After Effects and get started. So I have After Effects up. We'll click over here and create a new composition. Uh, I already have my width and height set to one that I normally like for lower thirds, 800 pixels by 300 pixels. I have my frame rate set at 29.97 frames per second. I have it 20 second duration. We'll name it LT main for lower third main. Enter and that creates a new comp. Next, you can hit Control Y and create a new solid. Uh, you see, I've already got my width and height set. Width, make it just a little bit smaller. Height, just make it a little bit smaller. And this is because we're going to be adding a drop shadow later and that'll get cropped off if we make it the full size of the composition. And we'll name this primary BG. And then we just hit OK. Now we have this, we'll just hit Y and it brings up our pain behind tool. Make sure snapping is enabled up here. Click on your anchor point and drag it over to the edge of your white solid here. Next, make sure you have your align window open. To get that, you go up to window align. And then we'll just click on this little one that just nudges it over the side of our composition here. Next thing we want to do is just hit Control D to duplicate. Do secondary BG. And then hit Control Shift Y and then you can edit your solid. We'll make the width 675 pixels and height 80 pixels. Yep, that looks good. We'll just move it down just a little bit. We'll move both of these up just a little bit. Make sure that they are still on the side. Yep. So now we have, you know, our main structure. Not much is going on yet. I'll move over to effects and presets just so we can start to see what's going on and add a drop shadow. Drop shadow is a great effect. I definitely tend to overuse it. I will just bump my softness way up and then copy this effect and move it down to primary. And now we can see we've got some separation. It's looking a little bit neater now. Next, I will hit Control T to bring up the text tool. It's also just right up there. And I will just type something like primary text. I will switch this to you know, some font that's a little bit nicer. Uh, yeah, avant-garde. That's the Meissner Media font. I'll keep it black because black's a nice color. Turn snapping off. And then one thing that I'm going to do special for this is I'm going to make the paragraph justified to the right. And then that way, whenever you edit the text, it'll go backwards instead of forwards. So you can make sure that your text doesn't run off the side as quickly. It can still run off this way. You don't have to come in and edit it because this is a new feature. It's kind of limited, but it's really, you know, a nice thing to have. Bump this guy up. I'll use my arrow keys to get a little more exact. I don't really love that positioning, so let's scoot it around a bit. Then I'm going to parent the primary text to the primary background so that the text follows the position of the background whenever we end up animating it. Then I'm going to duplicate primary text and make secondary text. Hit V to go to my selection tool. I'll drop it down here. Double click to edit it. Secondary text. And we'll shrink this down to where it fits. So this, you could have like, you know, Theo Meissner tutorial maker, you know, something like that. If you want, you can always just, you know, turn off these two layers and just do your primary text. But, you know, we're doing a little bit, we're going above and beyond for this. Then you can parent your secondary text to your secondary background. And now we're most of the way done. Uh, yep, we've got drop shadow on that one. Now we're just going to animate this really quickly. Shift click these, move down to about a little bit less than a second, hit P for position and keyframe that. And then we're going to just scoot these guys off screen. Just like that. Now we can play and see. Oop, they come on. Now let's just do a couple little things to make that look nicer. Select your keyframes, hit F9, then shift F3. If you're on a Mac, then your function keys might be messed up. Um, my best advice would be to just disable those stupid, you know, function things and get a real keyboard. But if you don't want to, you can always select your keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and then do 
easy ease, which is what the F9 does. And then you can click on this little graph editor and that's the shift F3. All right. So what you want to do in the graph editor is first go down and make sure that you are in editing your speed values. Select this last keyframe and then just kind of drag it over some. And this will make it shoot up really quick and then sort of ease out. And this is a really kind of standard velocity curve for a lot of really hip animations nowadays. So see that? You see that a lot? I'm going to make it a little bit less and then kind of come back, shoot them out a little bit more. Boom. And now to just make this a little bit nicer, we're going to move our secondary BG. Just a few frames. Oops, that's our primary. Secondary. Not that many frames, though. Just like three or so frames. There you go. Just animate it on really nicely. And now we are pretty much done. And now for the main part of this tutorial, make sure that you can edit this composition inside of Premiere, hit Control K. I'll bring up your composition settings. Go to Advanced and then click on Template, Unlock Text Layers, Editable in Premiere Pro. So what this does is it lets you import the composition into Premiere and then be able to edit the text. You'll be able to edit primary text and secondary text. Now we'll just save this with Control Shift S. We'll go over to Tuts, create a new folder. We'll call this LT Tuts. Hit Enter. Alt N. One save, and now we'll just open up Premiere, and then in a bit we'll be able to see exactly what we can do with this. So now that we're in Premiere Pro, we'll just create a new project. We will browse over to the folder that we just made. We'll call this LT Tut. Oh, folder. Now we'll call this. LT Tut PR1. Hit enter. Let me switch this to a workspace that fits on one monitor. This works. All right. So now let's just double click in here and we will go to. Let's grab a random piece of footage. Active project. We'll get something from here. All right. Open this guy up. Double click, I'll just pick a random little bit of footage. In Premiere, if you don't want to worry about what your sequence settings are, you can just click your footage and drag it into this little new little page thing, and that creates a new sequence with all the right sequence settings. So now, let me just take away this audio, because the Blackmagic camera's audio is awful. So we've got this cool little video here, and we'll say that that's good. So now to import our Lower third, we just double click again. We'll go and navigate to where we saved our After Effects composition. Right in here. LT Tut AE01. And now you can see we can import our LT Main composition. So hit OK. And then just drag this right down. And see, this is kind of, you know, in an awkward place right now. We just need to double click and we can just drag that over to where we want it. And then in order to edit, the text on here, you just double click on this and that brings up the effect controls. So we can type in, you know, EO didn't do this. And then boom, we can go back and we can see animates on just like that. Perfect. Now it's got a render obviously from After Effects, but Luckily, it caches that render, so it speeds up quite a bit, which is super nice. And then if you say, I don't want to say that, I want to say, you know, Theo likes keyboard. Boom, it updates right there. And that's so handy. It's great if you are, you know, a one-man guy and, like, you just want to save a bunch of time. Or if you're a graphics artist, and you want to be able to, you know, make things a little bit nicer for the editor that you're making these for, they will really appreciate this. So this is a fantastic feature. I've already used it on two projects and people have been impressed. So if you found this useful, be sure to like and share the video. 
If you want to see more videos coming soon, be sure to subscribe. You know, with this new release of the Adobe Suite, there's a couple more little features I'm going to be making tutorials about, which are going to be super handy. If you have any questions or if you found cool new features that I should be sure to look at or ways to do this better, you know, be sure to leave it down in the comments. I'm all about learning new things. I've been Theo with Meester Media. Be sure to eat your vegetables and have a great day.